So that is at play all the time. Now, not all communication is created equal. And this what this pyramid, we are so excited to share with share this with you because it has been tremendously significant for us in our work with relationships. Here's the deal. We have communication with a ton of people. In this chart, you can see at the bottom, the widest, broadest part of this pyramid is the cliche communication. And that is big and wide because you have that with the most people. You have that at the grocery checkout. You have that at the, at the store when you check out, the post office. I have that with my neighbor, like, oh, it's raining again. Oh, that's, you know, can you, don't forget to cut your grass, you know, this kind of thing. So we're talking about sports teams uh, and things like that. And it is an essential part of life, so we're not dogging on it. We're not saying, oh, we wish there wasn't cliche communication because it's essential. But it is just a, a lower level type of communication. There's not as much at stake. We have a ton of relationships that we are talking on a fact level. That's one up. We have some fewer relationships like that. But facts take up a lot of life. When I think about just the home life and the way I communicate with my family members, the people that I live with, about what's for dinner and don't forget to clean up this or um, don't forget to pay the water bill or your car needs to scoot over a little bit and so forth. There are just so many facts that need shared, so many things to talk about. And at work and in church, the same thing. Facts are essential, but they're not very warm and fuzzy. And I don't get to know somebody on a more personal level because the facts, the, it's still sort of a capped relationship. And we would, what we would love to see for you in a really healthy environment, whether it be a strong work team where you guys are really functioning as an effective, healthy team, or certainly at home with the relationships that matter the most. We want you to get to that next level, which John Powell calls um, the beginning of communication, really, in his book, Why Am I Afraid to Tell You Who I Am? Because ideas and judgments, uh, that level, that I, can, I get to the point where I can share with you what I'm thinking because I feel safe enough in the relationship. I can share an idea without, without thinking you're gonna say, well, that's a dumb idea. I can have um, an opinion on something where I say, did you see the neighbor, the, f the neighbor's fence? Whew, that's, that's ugly. I would not choose that. And I'm putting myself out there because you might respond differently. You might be offended by that or you might think that, that, you, that I'm crazy and they, you love the fence. But I'm risking it because our communication, our relationship is at a place where I want to be myself. I want to be real. I'm going to put myself out there. Now, the next one up is where we really want you to get, get to with the people that you want to grow in intimacy with. And I don't mean like husband-wife intimacy. I mean relational intimacy. That You really want to share who you are with them. And this is the emotional level. Now, I don't mean you're sharing your emotions like you're in the emotion, like, like when you're angry and you're railing on somebody or you're really sad and you're crying about it. I mean that you can even share past tense. Yesterday, during that meeting that we had, I felt overwhelmed by the size of this project, and I'd like to talk about the timeline of it. That is a way for you to let someone in, not just this project is too big. You know, you were crazy to set this up as a project initially, which can make the other person feel defensive. This is you owning that you're overwhelmed by it and that you'd like to have more conversation about it. That's a pretty transparent thing to say, and it, it can be that people will shut you down or not listen to you well. but. We like to think that if people know about this, they can engage in a healthy way and hear your emotions. And that is what we want to teach you tonight. And so you can even tell your friends and coworkers about this webinar. They can watch the replay and they can catch this, catch the wind of what this could mean and how it can transform relationships. But last but not least, we have peak communication, which happens with the fewest amount of people and definitely the most infrequent. But it's beautiful because peak communication is when you can share your innermost struggles, your hardships, the things that you are, even sin that you want to confess to someone, or the hard stuff of life, the fears that you have. On a po positive note, it could be dreams that you have, like you're aspiring for this and you wonder if someday it could be you could do this. And it's exciting to really let someone into your hope and your heart for what the future could look like. Now, peak communication is really for relationships that you are closest with. 
Um, this could be a marriage relationship or a parent-child relationship, close friends, that sort of thing. In fact, we say be careful to not be too close with someone maybe of the opposite gender. If you're a married person, you don't want to get too close and intimate sharing things with someone that you shouldn't have that kind of relationship with. And as a side note, um, in good counseling you find that you want to be careful not to share too fast. You don't want to go all the way to peak with somebody that you haven't known very long. You want to let this grow in a natural, healthy way. So as you look at this chart, you, I know we're going to unpack it a little bit more um, and show you some ways that you can look at this, but it's a wonderful way for you to sort of put a picture to these different types of communication and be identifying where you are. 